So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I declare a new hope of glory over your body. And I pray right now that each one of us will have our eyes open to see what is before us and to put our faith and our trust in you, the King of glory, and not in man, not in politics, not in administrations that are of this world, but in your administration. So, Father, we ag agree with your administration, your new vision, and revival for this nation in Jesus' name. Let's shout. Yeah. Now, I also want us to thank God. Something happened in this nation when our newest judge was appointed. Something happened. God looked down. He smiled at this nation. Something happened that secured a root in this nation. Father, we decree that we decree and we thank you right now that you are in charge of the week ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a very key week. Something's happened in our nation. Now, I want us to realize that. It's, it's not the same as it was a year ago. It's not the same as it was four years ago. Something dramatic has happened. Uh, I have been asked many times uh, why I have not decreed that President Trump will win this election. And, you know, I'm a true prophet. I only say what God tells me to say. He doesn't have to tell me one way or the other anything. But if he does tell me, I don't mind saying it, and I get lots of flack from it. I said Obama, Barack Obama would win the election when all of my friends said John McCain would. And that got me in lots of problems. Uh, I said in 2008, the Lord told me in 2012, a new, uh, new uh, 2016, a new administration would begin and President Trump would be a part of that. So he told me that in 2008. That wasn't difficult for me. That's written in my books the passage God gave me for these four years is all that God has said to me. Our nation is at a very crucial place, but I will say this. Our nation is not in apathy any longer. Let's thank God for that. I would, the Lord says I would rather have you hot or cold. Just don't be in apathy. We've had more people vote absentee in Texas than we had vote in the whole last election. That shows you something has shifted. All across this nation, I see apathy leaving. That's a good sign for us. Uh, it's a good sign that we're hearing voices rise up, good, bad, and ugly. I know in a family that had lots of different voices rise up, it was always good when they would rise up good, bad, or ugly, because you could at least get it out there. Now, so the only passage God gave me for these four years, I say it with confidence. And it is more about our nation than it is about the candidate that will lead it in the future. He gave me this passage when he told me that President Trump would be a part of this nation and would be the president of this nation and what would happen during his four years, that during the first three years, everything would be done to pull it up and pull him out of his office. That has occurred during those first three years. It has occurred. I've never seen anything like that in my life with any president. Uh, it wouldn't matter if he wore 
a green shirt, it would be lambasted. I don't believe that needs to be for anybody, to be quite honest. I believe people need to be free and respect it. And the minute we don't respect certain people, we're in trouble. That'll come back on you seven times. I've respected President Clinton during his entire uh, uh, tenure as president. Prayed for him more than I prayed for any president. President Bush, President Obama, and President Trump. And so there is a respect God's children are required of for those that serve them at that level. The Bible tells us that. And we have to have absolutes. I love what James said. See, you have three things going on. You have the conservative right. You know, that is like what you find in the Word of God where let's stone that woman because Moses said to stone her and she was caught in adultery. See, and then you have, and Jesus said, well, we can use the law or we can use a new grace. And if we're going to use the law, I think he wrote in with his finger Everything from young to old that everyone had ever done that was sitting there ready to stone her and say, if you want to use the law, this is what we're going to do with you. And they, back, they backed away and said, well, maybe there is a better way. Everybody say, there is a better way. <laughs> then you have liberalism. And then you have the far left. The far left is Marxism, communism, ultimate control. It ends up looking like Russia and China now. What God told me in 1986 was if we didn't shift in 2020, by 2026, we look like China. Now, I've written that. That is a sure word for us. You have to make a choice this year that we don't want to be ruled the same way China is being ruled. Now, that's it in a nutshell. If we don't make it this year, by 2026, you with younger children, that's what you're facing. Now. And so... This, that's the far left. Russia, he's president for life from now on because he can rule. He's probably the richest man in the entire world. That's what communism really looks like. It has the elite that rules. And yet, we're communal, the rest of us. Then you have liberalism where, well, we don't really have a lot of absolutes we want to stand for, so let's push this this way. And that can lead you in some real problems. And so our nation is an interesting dynamic of that pot. Now, this is the word the Lord gave me and said when President Trump began to reign. Then he began telling them this parable. A certain man had a fig tree that had been planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it, but he didn't find any. So he said to the vineyard keeper, for three years I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and I found none. Cut it down. Why does it even use up the ground, depleting the soil and blocking the sunlight? But he replied, let it alone. Let it alone, sir. Just one more year until I dig around it and put in fertilizer. 
Now this year we've had lots of fertilizer put in. I think we can all come into unity over that. Everybody say, this has been a year of the fertilizing. <laughs> I mean, it's been, fertilizer has been slung everywhere. Here's my cry. I don't want to see this nation plucked up at the end of this fourth year. And I believe we are hanging in a balance. And God is saying, God has had mercy on us this year, even in the middle of the fertilizing. Now, hear what I'm saying to you. Quit trying to stop the stench of the fertilizer. It was needed this year. So we could really see what this nation was about and see how it would bear fruit in the coming year. The Lord again spoke to me and said, this will not be fully settled until January the 18th. We, it will be swampy. It will be nasty. And we must stand praying until then. So, I have said what God has said to me. I have not held back. I hope you, some way, in the middle of the fertilizing, have not had too much slung on you. But if you did, that was necessary. Because this year has been a very difficult year of being dug around and fertilized. But let's decree right now, we're on the verge of growing in a new way. Father, we say right now, we ask for your fruit that will come from what you have done these last four years in Yeshua's name.